Hey guys, welcome back to Less Cooks More. Today we are cooking bread, homemade French bread. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do for our homemade bread is we're going to add in our yeast and our sugar and our water. So we're using instant yeast. And because of that, we don't have to wait for the yeast to activate. And you have to refrigerate your yeast after you open it. So um, this is what our yeast looks like. So we are taking one tablespoon of our yeast, pouring it in, and we are going to take two tablespoons of sugar, so one, two, and this is how we're going to activate the yeast. And I have water boiling on the stove, so I'm going to go grab that, and it's two and one fourth a cup. So I have two and fourth cups of water, so we are going to add that in. It's warm water, by the way. It's hot. Well, this is kind of hot, but it's supposed to be warm. If you didn't have instant yeast, that is where you would need to let this rest to activate for a little bit. But we have instant yeast, so we don't have to do that. Um, so next, we are going to add in our salt, oil, and then flour. Smell the yeast now, and then we have 3 fourths tablespoon of salt. And then we are going to add in oil, two tablespoons of that. So one, you can use coconut, olive, canola. It doesn't really matter for this recipe. Um, and then we're gonna add in three cups of flour. Overall, you're probably gonna end up using between five and six cups, six and a half. Um, but we are gonna just start by adding three cups right now so typically what you do is you you take a knife and you level everything off so this is one cup my mom really wanted me to do that everything is in there now and typically what you want to do is use a mixer a stand mixer if you have one i don't have one and a hand mixer goes too fast so we're gonna do it the old fashioned way. Typically you wanna use a wooden spoon, but I don't think we have one of those. Do we? Okay, so now we are going to mix and then we're gonna add in two and a half to three more cups. So old fashioned way with the wooden spoon. My mom showed me where it was. I don't live here. Well, I guess now I do, but I haven't lived here. So that's why I didn't know where it was. So now I'm gonna add in the rest of my water so the dough isn't so powdery, but then I'm gonna add in the two and a half cups of flour more, which then makes it more powdery, but I'm gonna keep mixing it because we want the dough to get thick. Um, once we get it into like where you can make a ball, you're just gonna wanna add a little bit more flour to coat it so it doesn't stick to your hands when you start to roll it out. Um, but you just want to make sure you coat the dough with a little bit more flour here. Guys, so I have added a lot of more flour just to make sure it's not sticking to my hands. The dough is not sticking to the bowl anymore. So I have to knead it for two to three minutes. It's pretty warm still in my hands. And then we're going to let the dough rest and grow. There's a couple different ways to do that. Um, and we actually have a bread proofer, so I might do that to make it easier. Otherwise, we're gonna have to let the dough sit for an hour, or we let the dough sit for 10 minutes, stir it, like press down the edges, cause it'll rise, um, and then do that like for five, five different times, like in 10 minute spurts. Um, so I'm going to try to put this in the oven. We have a proofer setting and see how that works. This is my first time using that, so we'll see. But it's gonna make the process go a little bit more quickly. So I'm gonna need, like I said, for two, three minutes. There are several techniques to kneading, and I didn't really use them. I just was kind of punching the dough and stretching it out and folding it, which works. So now I'm gonna grease the bowl with oil just because when we let the dough grow, 
it could stick to the bowl. So you just want to put oil on it so it doesn't stick. Make sure you get in there good. And then we are going to cover with a towel or you can use greased, um, what's it called? Saran wrap and just let it rise. Cover it, leave it be for an hour and then we will come back. So this is our dough. It's we put it in an oven that was not turned on. Um, it has, it looks like it's gotten bigger, but not really like substantially bigger and it's been an hour. So what we're gonna do is grease the counter. And don't worry, I've cleaned it. So we're good. And then we are going to take our bread, put it on here. So now you want to make sure that the dough is in an even rectangle so you can cut it in half. And I'm using this little chopper slash spreader thing that I use to decorate my cakes. I just got it from Kroger. Um, but I realized there's a little bit more on the other side so I just put some on there. And then you want to spread it out into a rectangle. I could use a rolling pin but it didn't say to do that so I'm not going to do that. But you're basically trying to spread it to be 9 by 13 inches, which is a little large if you ask me. But I don't have a ruler, so like a foot is a little over a foot is where you want to be. And then 9 inches this way is like this wide. So um, I also realized there's measurements on here. but. My sister wants to be precise. So this is approximately 12 inches right now. So we need like an inch more. And I think we got it now. So we're gonna start at the long edge and roll the dough. This is what it said. It said roll the dough, pressing out any air bubbles as we go. So that's what we're doing. It said to Make sure the seam is underneath at the bottom and you want to pinch. So I'm going to pinch with my fingers. It said to pinch with your heel. I don't know what that meant, like the heel of your hand. Like, how do I do that, you know? Okay, so pinching the edges, I think, also means like doing this. So on this side to keep this closed. But now I'm also kind of like, how does that... You know what guys, who knows? I don't really know how to make the, <laughs> the shape, but this is what we're doing right now. And we don't have a, um, we don't have parchment paper, so I'm just gonna put it directly on here. We just want the seam side to be down. And then we are going to do this with our next one. And you don't have to put everything like on the same pan, that's just what I was doing. I think I'm gonna roll this together just so we have less seams and make it like a ball. Okay, so I'm speeding through this one, but I think it turns out a lot better after rolling it out so I have less seams. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and skip to both of them. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is slice the bread and then I'm gonna put it in our proofer. Proof the bread, we're gonna cover it with a towel, put it in there for a little bit more time just to let it rise and fill out the shape. So you can really slice it with whatever you want. Just be careful not to ruin the shape. Um, I'm actually gonna use a knife. So really quickly, I'm just sharpening the knife and then I wash it and then we are ready to go. Again, you can use parchment paper that is greased or a towel and put it in the oven, let it sit out, put it in the proofer. I'm gonna do the proofer. Oh. We are doing the lower oven and we have a bread proof setting. So we're gonna just do that. I have no idea what these mean, but we're just gonna do bread proof, which is I guess 100 degrees. And we're just gonna let those proof for a little bit. So done proofing and this is what we're working with. So they grew a little bit, but not as much as I expected, I think. I don't really know what I was expecting here, but yeah, we're done with the proofing. 
been in for literally like a minute and I grabbed some ice cubes. We're gonna put them in the bottom of the oven just to have like steam escape really quickly and we're gonna close the oven super quick. And then the steam creates a nice crispy crust for the bread. So that's what we're gonna do. You want to be careful um, when you're closing the oven so it doesn't make the bread um, drop. Okay guys, so this is my French bread. I didn't seal it enough so you can see that this side is opening and pressed down enough. So this is our bread, thanks for watching. It's a super easy recipe. I would say next time I'm just gonna make sure everything is sealed properly. Um, and it didn't raise a ton, so I might wait a little bit longer, but I'm going to try some of the bread. It's pretty hot still, so. Oh, wow. Look at that, the steam coming out. Can you see it? That is some good bread. Good looking bread. Okay. It's really warm. It's really good. I want to see how it tastes. It's really good. I'm proud of the bread. Super easy to make. Comment below, like, and subscribe. Um, and let me know what you'd like me to cook next or if you try the recipe, how it turned out. Thanks for watching.